Okay, for more on this now, California Congressman Devin Nunes, ranking member, of course, of the House Intel Committee. Congressman, good morning. Great to be with you. I want to get to that veto threat from the president over Pfizer, but first I want to get to what's really behind it. As you know better than anyone, you've been all over the story for several years now. President's upset about surveillance of Americans, people tied to his campaign. Back in 2016, he's upset about the unmasking of General Michael Flynn. Uh, we had Marco Rubio, the acting Senate Intel chair, on the program a little while ago. He said he wants to see the transcripts come out now of the phone call between Michael Flynn and the Russian ambassador, get it out, and he wants to see as many documents as possible. You want that out there? What else might be coming. Well, I think that's exactly right. We need to see a lot more documentation because transparency is key. And I just heard John Roberts', Roberts report. Uh, the, the key here is, is that we had a compromise between Republicans and Democrats that went to the Senate. It was dramatically changed. At that point, it was really unworkable, I think, for law enforcement. It came back over here to the House of Representatives, where you have to remember, the Democrats, for the most part, aren't here. Like a third of them are not even here because mm -hmm. they're they're going to institute this proxy voting. So we can't even debate. And that's the whole reason to have a legislative branch of government is to debate these issues. Sure. And if we can't debate something as important as as you know spying on American citizens and spying on political campaigns, it really looks like the Democrats right. don't want to be here because of the political problems that they know because their party was directly involved in the in the scandal. Okay, a lot to unpack there, and I'll go through each one, including proxy voting. But let's start with the substance of what the president's alleging, which has gotten him upset and has said, hold up this FISA bill, the surveillance bill. Don't let the government have these surveillance powers until we get to the bottom of what happened in terms of spying surveillance in 2016. Quickly, the president says it's worse than Watergate. What specific crime can you point to that makes this worse than Watergate? Well, we've had uh, we've made eight criminal referrals, and so I would say there's two big ones on conspiracy. People conspired to defraud the United States uh, and took away people's uh, rights. So, if you take Carter Page for example, mm -hmm. people conspired to do that. That was a conspiracy by law enforcement. There was lying, there was leaking, there was misleading Congress. Uh, so, those are the eight criminal referrals we've already sent on this scandal. Uh, that I believe that uh, John Durham is looking, you know, into this. Uh, you know, we don't know if he's uh, considering our referrals or not. You also have Senator Grassley has made numerous referrals. So there's plenty of laws that have been broken here. Which would include the leaking of General Flynn's name after it was unmasked, one would presume. That's, Let's get to right. the FISA reform question, which is the issue of the day. So the Justice Department, the Assistant Attorney General Stephen Boyd is saying, here's your concerns about what might have gone wrong before, but quote, the department were close with House leaders on both sides to draft legislation. The Senate thereafter made significant changes. We get all that. The House is now poised to further amend the legislation. If passed, the Attorney General would recommend that the President veto the legislation. So they're concerned, as you are, about the changes. On the other hand, the Attorney General, William Barr, as John Roberts pointed out, has previously said he needs these powers to go after foreign terrorists. So are you willing to make this point about what went wrong in 2016 and hold Hold the attorney general back from having powers he says he needs to fight terrorists. Well, let's try to quickly unpack this. So remember, there's only one specific part of FISA. That's the records component, what was originally called 215. That's the only thing that's up for reauthorization. That's actually gone dark. Larger FISA that allows us to target terrorists, et cetera, et cetera, that's still in operation and that's in permanent law. That does not expire. And that's, that was the agreement that we made with the Attorney General a couple months ago, uh, was to come to an agreement of something that would actually go back and rewrite that law so that we would have access to uh, the Woods file and all the things that were done uh, in this conspiracy by dirty cops in the Clinton campaign and, and likely people within the Obama administration. So those, some of those changes were made. It went to the Senate, it was changed. And, and that's the problem here, Ed, is that you know, the Democrats aren't even here. Mm. Uh, you know, they're, they're run, I mean, the staff aren't even here. Uh, they made these changes. You know, I'm guessing they had conference calls amongst Democratic members of Congress. They didn't involve the Republicans. And right. the Attorney General has said these aren't even workable changes at this point. The Attorney General couldn't even use the legislation under the legislation that's written now, uh, as, as I understand so it. And then you being, have on top of that, yeah. it's an unworkable bill, along with the fact that we still have a lot, a, a real need for transparency so the American people know what happened back in 2016. And you have the press who's denying this, 
And then you have Twitter, the t what I call the tech oligarchs hmm. that you were talking about earlier, yeah. that are that are bringing a whole new wrinkles to this because they're they're essentially editing and censoring what the American people get to see. So we have a lot of serious problems here, and it starts with Democrats need, needing to be here to work. And you don't believe this is real reform of FISA? Very quickly on proxy voting, you say Democrats are not there. Nancy Pelosi, uh, in terms of your objections to proxy voting, she says House Republicans, sad stunt. The lawsuit you have shows that their only focus is delay and obstruct urgently needed action to meet the needs of American workers and families during the coronavirus. Got 30 seconds, your response about why you think she's trying to push through proxy voting and it's not a good idea in your estimation. Well, well real quick, I'm standing here in the biggest democracy, most powerful country on earth, uh, in the U.S. Capitol. I haven't seen one Democrat this morning. We are asking people, grocery store workers, people in agriculture, they're all going to work. Where the hell are the Democrats at? So they want to make massive changes to cover up a scandal uh, that they participated in and spying on the president's campaign, and they want to hold conference calls and then just allow people to sit at home in their, in their basement and then vote on this? I, I think if, if this wasn't being censored uh, by the tech oligarchs and by the mainstream media, I think the American people would say, no, th there's something wrong here. All right. Uh, the problem is the censoring is having a tremendous impact on our population. Devin Nunes not holding back this morning. Devin, Congressman, appreciate Thank you. you coming in. Thank you, Ed.